Hey everybody, Brandon here from Cat Intentions, and in today's video, with the new year coming up on us soon, uh, I want to share some habits that are must-haves for designers, engineers, and professionals. Uh, if you haven't already, you're going to want to implement as many of these habits as you can for your design and drawings and just professional life. These are all going to help save you time, make you more productive, and make life a lot easier for you in the long run. Let's jump into today's video and take a look at some of my favorite habits for the new year. Cheers. <laughs> All right, so jumping right in, habit number one, like anything in life that you may borrow or rent, you should always leave drawings in the same condition or better than the way you found them. This includes things like not exploding blocks, not deleting potential reference files that someone has added in, even if they don't seem relevant to the drawing at the time. At the very least, ask your colleague if it's able to be removed or unnecessary at this point. Uh, things like drawing everything on a single layer and ignoring the standards or layers that someone has previously set up can be very frustrating when they go back into that drawing. We should always try to leave our drawings the way we found them, if not better, and by not messing with someone else's hard work, we can give them the satisfaction of knowing that when they open their drawing again next week, things aren't going to be radically different or confusing. This is also a two-way street in that we should not be leaving or creating our drawings in a way that will make it difficult for someone else to hop in and use them. This means using the company standards, putting our objects and text on the proper layers. You know this is typically set up by a company standard, but if you don't have a company standard, creating one of your own using a template like the ones you can get on my course or download on the website, catintentions.com, are a huge time saver. Keeping these things organized and usable for the rest of the designers in your company, or even clients if you ever need to send your files away, will go a long way in not annoying anybody, keeping things within budget, and just keeping your drawings looking professional throughout the process. The next habit that I hope we're all already following is keeping our design work in model space and our sheet and layout work in layout space. I know there are many holdouts and occasionally there is an exception or a reason to create our drawings and title blocks within model space, but those are far and few between. For many, the accuracy, productivity, and general usability will be improved when creating all of our drawings in layout space and our drawing objects in model space. This will keep everything separate as well as keep everything simple when it comes to scaling and not having mistakes when printing out drawings. Now if you're newer to AutoCAD, this means all of your drawing and design work should be at one-to-one -one scale or real-life scale within the model space and you can use layout tabs to create your individual drawing sheets and within that using a viewport to set the drawing to a specific scale. The scale can range through a variety of custom and standard scales and doing it this way allows you to change up the scale of your drawing without actually having to scale any of the design or drawing model work. Now this is the standard and common practice in the industry and I offer a ton of uh, videos on my channel for free that cover a lot of these things like viewports and layouts or you can take my AutoCAD fundamentals course uh, which teaches all of this as well. I'll put that link up above and down below. Alright so the third habit that we should all be following and implementing this new year is one that I don't see as many designers doing but is one that is super important especially if you're in a larger company or working with multiple people on a project and that is keeping a paper trail of your red lines, markups, and revisions throughout your project. Now this is as simple as keeping a PDF uh, version of your drawings each time you issue or send them away for review to a manager, as well as saving a copy of any PDF markups that come back. Dating them and adding the reviewer's initials to the file name is a great way to keep track of them and you can keep them all in a simple folder, although a lot of companies will have a standard procedure for this for tracking revisions. Once you've made your revisions, you can simply then highlight 
whether it's crossing them off with a green highlighter within the PDF or plot them and highlight them as you go. This allows you to ensure you don't miss any of the markups along the way. And if you purposely are skipping one because you are waiting for information, you don't believe the markup is correct, you can circle it, leave it unhighlighted or unchecked so that when it's back checked or the reviewer takes a look at your markup, they'll know why or why not you did the uh, revisions necessary. Uh, as I mentioned, you don't need this to be a physical paper trail, although that is a great way to keep track of this as well. I find that a digital copy in a folder with the project is a great way to track all of the past revisions, markups, and red lines, because you never know when you need to go back and check what may have been changed along the way, or occasionally you need to go back a few revisions, and it'll be easy to just pull up that old PDF just to confirm everything from a past revision is in your drawing. All right, so next up, one habit that I started years ago was keeping a paper notebook uh, by my side at all times. I have a small one that I keep in my pocket for personal lists and reminders, and then I have a larger one here that I keep by my side when I'm working, whether it's for my day job, on videos, or anything in between. I'm always making notes. This is helping me keep track of tasks, what I do each day, as well as the kind of time frame and hours I work on each task, as well as any other important project notes, daily reminders, meetings, that kind of thing as the day goes by. I've done this every day uh, for probably close to 10 years now. I've got dozens of notebooks. Uh, it can be as minor as a little section with your to-dos for the day, any kind of little things that come up, and then just cross it off. You could have a, a few days per page, one day per page, a week per page. It's kind of up to you, but this is a great practice and habit to get into. It allows you to kind of dump things out of your mind and onto the piece of paper, freeing you up for other information, and it prevents things from getting forgotten. I can also quickly look up what project I was working on a month ago, any little notes about the project that we may be uh, skipped or didn't need at the time, but things that I can go back and check on. Same as if you're in a call or a meeting and you're just making quick mental notes, you can jot those down without having to look around for a piece of paper. You know this notebook is always going to be by you. I'm always sure to put the day's date or the week uh, that I'm writing on so I can go back chronologically and find things as I need them. This is also a great way to keep up the uh, hand printing or hand writing practice. I know many of us, especially nowadays with phones, laptops, computers, we're on them all day. We're not necessarily using our hand to write or more, more specifically to draw or design by hand. And that kind of leads me to the next habit or tip that I would like to get into and want many of us to start to do more next year. And that is doing our initial concept or design or even just a sketch outline by hand on a piece of paper. It could be in your notebook for that project or it could just be on a piece of graph paper, but the practice of drawing and drafting by hand is something that I was taught in school, but I know many are not anymore. There's something to learning the ins and outs of hand drawing and hand drafting that translates really well to computer drafting and computer design, but it's a lost skill and art and I think it goes hand in hand with a successful designer is being able to get your idea from your head and onto a piece of paper so you can show say a client or a manager right away in a meeting what you're thinking it also helps you both work out kinks and issues within the design I'll typically draw out my typical sections maybe a road alignment if I'm doing a road just sketch it on by hand on a blank piece of paper so that we're both on the same page as our design gets started uh, things like concepts initial layouts, typical sections can all be sketched out on a piece of paper similar to a markup on a PDF, but doing it by hand just kind of gets that connection to the paper and helps you get the idea out quicker and simpler and makes it easy to mark it up and change on the fly. As I mentioned, my notebook is always on my side here. Uh, that one's for work. I've also got one that has uh, design and blog and video ideas. Um, as one on me in my pocket most days to keep small lists for groceries, tasks, kid activities. Um, I like keeping these in an analog format. Battery power never matters. Uh, if I can't have my phone on me, I can still have my notebook. Uh, it's great 
tool and habit to get into on the daily. And then finally, the last habit that I wanted to share today for the new year is learn something new as often as you can. Uh, early on in each year, I like to set a goal or multiple goals of things to learn, whether that's new software, uh, new workflows, maybe a course, something on project management, something on math or science, or just a new activity in general. Maybe it's a sport or a board game, something you want to improve on or learn uh, to either further your career or your personal life. Consistently improving your skills is a great way to become indispensable to your company, even during slow times at work or layoffs. The employees who make an effort to go above and beyond, whether that's learning company standards, uh, recommending new or interesting workflows, uh, volunteering to improve title blocks or create blocks for uh, common tasks you have in AutoCAD or in other software um, always stands out and brings you to the top of the list when it comes to indispensable employees and those that are in line next for promotions to senior design and management. Uh, one of the easy ways to keep on touch with new ideas and techniques is to subscribe to the CAD Intentions newsletter, which you can get for free in your inbox each week by using the link. I'll put one down below and up above, but it's cadintentions.com slash sign up. You can see in last week's email here uh, where I touch base on a ton of different workflows and things that you need to know as an AutoCAD designer or engineer or drafter, things about automation, saving time using sheet sets, XREFs, all of this I talk about in last week's newsletter, as well as provide links to specific tutorials that will help you along the way. I also mention these things in Twitter posts, uh, tweets, as well as on the blog, like this one here about four things you can be doing to make yourself indispensable during slow or downtime at work. And one of those is always staying on top of new techniques, workflows, and industry standards which goes back to that habit of always being hungry to learn new things, whether it's listening to audio books while you're doing repetitive tasks or working out or commuting or reading a weekly newsletter. But that's all for today's tips and habits. I hope you guys enjoyed them. I'd love to hear what your habits and New Year's resolutions are down below in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click that like button. Cheers and have a happy new year.